Welcome to our review on gas pressure and temperature. So the first thing we're going to consider then is what happens when you actually do something as simple as blowing up a balloon. So when you're blowing up a balloon, what you're doing is increasing the number of air particles that's actually contained within the balloon. Now, whenever we have particles inside a container, then they are moving, which means that those particles are going to collide with the surface of the balloon. Each of those collisions creates a very small force. But what we find is the more particles we've got, then the more of those little forces are created, which means we've got gas pressure being produced by those collisions. If we consider the same situation in a container that's incapable of expanding, then what happens is as we add more air particles, then the pressure is going to increase. Because if you've obviously got a fixed volume with only a few particles in, there'll be a limited number of collisions. But if we then add a lot more particles, then we're going to increase the number of collisions and therefore increase the pressure. The next thing to consider is what impact temperature actually has on the pressure of these items. So when we increase the temperature of our gas, then what we find is those particles of the gas will gain kinetic energy. When they've gained kinetic energy, they're moving faster and therefore they're going to collide more frequently with the sides of the container, which means we get an increase in pressure. And that's obviously why they always tell you never to put aerosol cans in fires and so on, because the gas is under pressure anyway in an aerosol can. So when you increase the temperature, you're increasing the pressure even more. And because that container can't expand, it's just likely to explode. When it comes to how we measure the pressure, we use a piece of equipment called a pressure gauge. The units for pressure are pascals, which are given the little symbol of PA, capital P, lowercase a, and one pascal is equal to one newton per meter squared. The only other thing to be mindful of is any time that we have that lowercase k in front of the pascal unit, then that means it's one kilo pascal. So one kilo pascal is the same as 1000 pascals just like we've done with grams and kilograms. The word kilo just means thousand. So in terms of our relationship between temperature and pressure, we can say that if the temperature increases, the pressure increases. And if the temperature decreases, then the pressure decreases. If we consider what we'd see if we kept cooling that gas down to what's called absolute zero, which is zero degrees Kelvin, then we'd actually have a pressure of zero pascals. Now that's something we can't generate in the lab there, but we can work it out by extrapolating a graph of results we have collected in our lab. So you could do this experiment, heat the gas up to different pressures and take those readings, plot them on a graph, and then by extending your line, so extrapolating a line, what we can do is see what pressure we'd have at those temperatures that we haven't achieved. Hopefully at the end of this video you can now explain how the motion of molecules in a gas is related to its temperature and to its pressure and you can explain the relationship between the temperature of a gas and its pressure when it's in a fixed volume.